Thank you for viewing this Trainsert video. Please check out our site at www.trainsert.net from time to time to check out if there's new videos available. Today we'll take a look at ASP.NET 2 and we'll dwell into master pages. It's fairly common in today's world that when you visit sites on the internet they have a reusable user interface. That means regardless what link you click on the user interface stays the same and the content is swapped out. In ASP.NET 2 the concept of master pages allows you to create that reusable user interface and when you later decide to add content you simply apply the master page. The first thing we'll do is right click the solution and choose add new item. Then I will select master page and click on add. As you can see the master page is defined by this at master directive at the top of the page. Also we're given a content placeholder by default. This is where the child pages will add their content. So for this example I'll go ahead and remove this. Then we move to design view and we're ready to define our master page which will serve up as the generic user interface for this web application. And we'll use a table to position items and when I click on layout insert table you can see this new feature available the ability to create a table from a given template. So I'll just select the header, footer and side template and click OK. To further explain the concept we need to add some content to the master page. So let me just add a label and we'll set some properties on the label like the text can be fixtures company name here so you can just swap that out and we can set some font properties like the size and we can set the four color to yellow and then we can click on the cell and we can set some cell properties like the background color we can set the background color to navy also let me just reposition the cell so it does not occupy that much space then we have defined the top logo let's define the menu and the content placeholder and then we have these two cells that will function as placeholders for these items. In the left cell we'll have the menu. In the right cell we'll have the content. And for the menu control we'll use a tree view control in this example and we'll do some formatting. I'll choose the XP file explorer and we can also click on show lines like that. In the content placeholder we can just add a content placeholder like that. And I'll just remove the text, content, and menu. There are a couple of ways to add content pages that uses this master page. One way is to right click and choose Add Content Page, which is the simplest way. We can also navigate to our Solution Explorer and choose Add New Item. If we simply add a web form and specify the Select Master Page, we can define what master page we want this web form to use. If we do not select the master page now, we can add it later. But the simplest way to go is to simply choose Select Master Page and click Add. And we'll just click on the master page dot master, click OK. And once I navigate to design mode, you can see what it looks like. And now we can add content to the content area and we also get this nice little preview on what the page will look like. Let's go ahead and just type in some content. Some content comes here. Also, I will need to populate the tree view, but we cannot do that from here, so we need to navigate back to our master page and right click and choose Edit Notes. And then we can add some root notes, we can add some childs, like that and we're finished. Then I right click the default2.aspx, set a start page and click on play. And as you can see the page was rendered successfully using master pages. Now this was a very simple example on the usage of master pages but hopefully you saw how powerful they can be. Let's take a look at some of these concepts from a code perspective. 
So we'll go to code view and I'll expand my page events and we'll find a new event called pre-init. In the pre-init event, this is rendered before the init event and in here you can actually apply a master page file. So if you want to do this dynamically in code, this is the way to do it. And here we can simply say, I want the master page dot master, like that. So the pre-init event is very useful and we'll see a lot of examples using the pre-init event in other videos. If you want to access the master page from code, you can do so by accessing the property page.master. This is a read-only property that gets the master page. And from here we can do stuff like find control. So if I try and find the control label 1, we can set its text property if we cast it into a label. So let's go ahead and do that. Dim label as label equal and we'll C type this into a label. And then we can set its text property equal to new text. Let's go ahead and try this out, but I'll just comment out this line of code and click on play. As you can see, we were able to override the text property on the label control. Very easy. You can add all sorts of objects to the master page. And if you want to use it heavily, I suggest you cast a strongly typed reference to your master page for strongly typed access to properties so you don't have to use the find control method, which is weakly typed. If you want to, you can also supply default content to a master page. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we go to the master page and try and type in some default content here, and then we go to our default2.aspx file, go into source view, and then we remove the content placeholder, and we click on play. Now as you can see, the default content comes here. So as you can see, the concept of master pages is not a difficult or advanced one, but it is an important one, and it can help us to create generic user interfaces that can be used throughout an entire site. So I hope you found the video informative and that you soon mastered this concept.